Welcome to Out of the Blank. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Roman. Roman, for everyone out there listening who might not know who you are, would you please introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Dr. Ian Polsky. I'm a professor at the University of Louisville. I do research on AI safety. When we talk about AI safety, what particular um, area would you say that we definitely need AI safety in? I know AI is kind of large. Um, in general, when we can talk about the amount of what we could implement with artificial intelligence, I'm just curious to where do your thoughts go when we first talk about AI safety? So we can talk about safety for systems we have right now. Usually that would be algorithmic bias, technological unemployment, ethics in AI. Uh, I concentrate on safety for systems we don't yet have, but likely to have in the future systems at the human level of performance and beyond. And uh, really, since they can be applied in any domain, safety would likewise be anything to do with driving, economics, nuclear response, really any domain of expertise uh, currently possessed by humans. So like autonomous vehicles, would that be one? Uh, sure, yeah, you want your self-driving cars to be safe in terms of driving, safe from hackers, safe from uh, abuse uh, by terrorists. Yeah, well, I mean, even with um, like government stuff as well, too, because it, it, I talked to someone about autonomous vehicles and we talked about implementing software. I'm like, well, what stops them from like, you know, you do something like break a law, for instance. Now, law is a good one, but we do have some dumb laws like collecting rainwater is a law. So it's like, how do you know necessarily that a law wouldn't get pushed to where they could just lock down your car and then next thing you know, you can't drive anywhere. And I'm like, this is like stuff that. It scares me. Maybe it might be on a little bit different side than what you focus in, but it's just stuff where I say it's so easily to lose aspect or control of a vehicle, whether it's a hacker, whether it's another force, whether it's something like this, where you don't deem yourself as the person now responsible for the thing that you own. Right. So that's something you can probably have right now without any AI, right? If regulators decide to disable an app or modify software, that can be done just by people. Uh, we specifically are concerned about problems which are unique to AI as the malevolent agent. Hmm. So what's like with AI, for instance, now, when we go into the realm of artificial intelligence, it's created by someone. Someone had to create that art artificial intelligence. Is there a giant fear aspect of where that's going? Or do you think people would just get comfortable with the idea of artificial intelligence? Because we're getting used to technology, I think, incorporating more parts into our life. Um, but it's about like, I'm always worried about the ethics part to it, whether it's someone's abuse of it or whether it's just it not, I guess, doing something that maybe we didn't expect it to do kind of covering all aspects of it. Right. So the surprise is what we are concerned about. If a system is generally capable, it could come up with, uh, things we didn't anticipate, even if it's trying to address our orders or preferences it may do so in a way none of us will truly like so commonly examples given for people who are not technical would be like a genie granting you wishes and then you get very disappointed you want to undo the wish you got and uh, you run out of wishes pretty quickly well, it's even like with um, if we create something that could be self-sustainable, for instance, be able to fix a problem when it resolves a problem, what stops it from going a little bit too far to making itself, I wouldn't say like more like a futuristic scenario, like maybe something that you would see in like a sci-fi movie. Everyone always relates this type of discussion to like sci-fi, um, but something that you create a self-sustaining not algorithm, but an artificial intelligence that's able to fix itself when it does see a problem, be able to basically function on its own without your access to it. Because people get lazy. It gets difficult to keep maintaining with something over and over and over again. But what stops it from just 
fixing a problem, but starts deeming other things that might necessarily not be a problem, but a flaw in its system. And next thing you know, you have this thing that starts running off and doing its own, you know, complete amount of work where you're like, this isn't what I wanted it to do. So that already happened with computer viruses. A lot of times, uh, original design for a computer virus doesn't really predict all the ways that virus can infect systems, can modify itself. So uh, it's a very real problem of uh, software being independent from, from us, not relying on us to sustain it. Hmm. Even with like, because the way I'm looking at it, and I just start kind of thinking a little bit differently now is, with artificial intelligence, I always kind of just pictured it would just be one artificial intelligence, but I never even thought about the possibilities that there could be multiple. Like imagine, you know, companies get involved in making their own softwares in a sense. Imagine if a company designs its own artificial intelligence and then you have a bunch kind of like a spider web of all these random artificial intelligence out there with different protocols and different methods as well too. Right. So with the kind of current systems, it's a lot of different agents. Everyone has their own AI model they developed, trained. Um, some, th some people think that if they get to human level and above, the first one to get there will kind of take over and prevent other AI agents from coming into existence. So we might end up with a single all-powerful system, but uh, right now it looks like there is going to be some competition, some arm races, uh, arms races between them. Now, could an artificial take out another artificial intelligence? Like, could it be programmed to do that? Uh, again, if you think about software competition, an antivirus versus a virus, you have competing agents in games. Uh, certainly, yeah, they compete for limited resources, computation, uh, preventing our systems from exploiting same, same resource or same uh, cybersecurity penetration techniques. Yeah. I get a little bit scared because I know everyone always deems this futuristic world where people won't have to work anymore and we just have machines do things for us. I'm not really necessarily worried about machines taking, I mean, you know, coming after us or anything, but I'm more worried on an aspect of like, would it just phase out human competition human work human anything really need because in, in a way that i've heard people talk about it just seems like machines do things better in a sense so technological unemployment is a different type of concern it's not so much about existential risk it's more about uh, what are you going to do with your life if we give you unconditional basic income uh, for a lot of people their job their profession is very important in defining who they are, what they do with most of their life. So if that is gone, they'll have to come up with some new ways to keep themselves busy. Well, that, I mean, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It depends on how it's done. I mean, if you have a lot of people with nothing to do, that could be quite problematic. Yeah. Especially, um, we talk about like, can, imagine being forced out of a job position you necessarily didn't want to be forced out of. Right. So for people who love their jobs, that's especially a uh, challenging paradigm shift. A lot of people hate their jobs, so they'll be quite happy not to go work at McDonald's anymore and just get yeah. the check in the mail. Yeah, I mean, even what, what happens if you examine it to a business aspect, you're owning your own business. Imagine if that gets artificial intelligence or that owns the market. Next thing you know, man, businesses are gone. It's just this idea of one system that's regulated by one person. So eventually, if we get to human level performance, all jobs will be automatable. Oh, There's God. not going to be any exceptions. The anxiety. Um, <laughs> it, it does scare me a little bit because, I mean, I, I honestly, I like working, but also people bring up the point like, well, if you didn't have to work, you only like it because you're used to it and you're forced to. Um, that makes sense. But in some aspects, I mean, we watch how Google and all these giant corporations start kind of controlling. I mean, they dominate the web browsing market in a sense. I mean, if you ask people what they have downloaded on their computer, it's Google. Now, is Google a company? Yes. But what stops a company from branching out and then dominating the market when it comes to competitive aspects of artificial intelligence, when that becomes more capable for just regular people to have? Corporations could certainly become independent agents, and some people see them as super intelligent. But getting back to what you were asking about people, look at the owners of those companies. They certainly don't have to work. They got enough money, but they seem to work more than anyone. That's true. Yeah, but they just hire a bunch of people to do the work for them. Is that really work? 
I mean, managing a company like Tesla is more work than you can ever imagine. I believe Elon, but when I look at Bill Gates, I'm like, this man isn't doing anything but picking out his sweater collection for the next week. He specifically retired a while ago and now does more giving away money than trying to earn it. But those who are still active in the industry, Zuckerberg's, you know. Even though he's in the media fire a lot too, because his algorithm, I guess, was. So with algorithms, for instance, now, if someone programs that, that's a form of artificial intelligence, correct? Whatever is programmed to trained to self-program like neural networks. Yeah, in any case, it's AI, sure. And then when we talk about like just going from algorithms, what's the evolutionary stage of that? Like what, go what goes past algorithms? Not sure I fully understand your question. So we historically just wrote the code we understood. Engineering design, you had some sort of a expert system maybe. Latest is where you have a large collection of neurons and lots of data given and they just learn from that data without kind of manual supervision. So self-regulating by itself. So that's a form of artificial intelligence. So it's still software, but it's uh, not something we fully understand how it works. We don't control individual weights of those neurons. It's um, self-organizing. Self-organizing. Now, can one be self, can one be, I guess, de designed or created to be able to influence the decision of another one? Maybe not knock out the competition, but be able to modify like much like a hacker can. Well, yeah, in any competition, you can certainly influence other agents if you have control over your environment to even direct access to that other source code. So would there be a way to, I guess, make rules or regulations that that wouldn't happen? Like what's to stop another company from just destroying other or manipulating other people's artificial intelligence? It depends on how you do it. So if you do it through, let's say, market manipulation, just by the means of uh, economic influence, it's perfectly legal and you can. If you're hacking into their computers and changing code, that's that's a crime. So it depends on how you do it. It's only a crime if you get caught, right? No, it's a crime. If you <laughs> just break the law. You're talking about punishment. It's very different from uh, committing a crime. And if it's done by AI, it's not obvious how you can punish an AI, right? We don't have any ways of uh, actually discouraging AIs from engaging in illegal activities. Those will probably be thought of later once it gets more superior, right? Like we're kind of like in the infancy stages as much as is advanced now, or are we farther than probably the general public isn't really keen on how far we are with artificial intelligence. Well, experts disagree. Some say we are as close as maybe five to seven years from human level performance. Others say it will never happen, but uh, maybe 2045 is a reasonable point for most people to be concerned. Um, when it comes to your fear aspect of it, where do you typically loom around? My fear aspect. So I'm concerned about systems we don't uh, fully understand. We yeah. cannot predict, we cannot control. And if they become very powerful, then we don't really know what they're going to do. So I guess that's what I'm worried about. Where would that start? Because I know we said autonomous vehicles, but if you're like, I'm not super worried because the way I've heard about with autonomous vehicles, it's like 2050, 20 something. It's kind of down the line where I figured someone would just figure it out. But when it comes to like a lot of our weapon systems, for instance, are being kind of, it's being more digitized than anything. We're having more looking at cyber attacks rather than nuclear destruction in some aspects. So all of those are concerning just the different levels. So a self-driving car is dangerous for an individual, maybe a small group. Weapons are dangerous maybe for, you know, larger groups, hundreds of people. With um, superintelligence, the concern is complete existential risk to humanity as a whole. So a system can come up with something like a novel biological virus or something again surprising we cannot predict where it will impact everyone now when we talk about like a, a biological virus for instance would it be able like how would it be able to recognize or be able to create its own wouldn't that have to be monitored by a human or something like that or have a programmed intent to do so or are you saying that it could evolve past what it was programmed to do and just recognize like how would it recognize to even 
think of that idea or create something like that. Well, that's by definition what a system as smart as a human or smarter would be able to do, right? If humans can do it, those systems are able to do. I, it's just hard to analyze that in a machine because I always look yes. at like, yeah, <laughs> that's 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 what I'm saying. Is like I can picture a human having like a random thought like that, but creating a a, a, a intelligent system with like its own consciousness in a sense to be able to do that it doesn't necessarily need to look human, but if it just could think of random aspects or develop a thought pattern, much like a human can. So they are modeled on human brain, right? Those artificial neural networks. So if you think a human brain can do something like that, certainly a model of it uh, running at higher speed, maybe with more resources should be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm trying to, I'm looking at it. Cause like, for instance, like AI, I don't know if you've seen like AI um, music, like where they create their own music and they're able to go off that stuff that's programmed in there, but then it kind of evolves past that. Cause it can kind of develop its own thing and you can choose to accept it on some things or reject it and it'll keep pumping out and pumping out. And so it's like a random generator. I just can't picture a random, I, maybe I'm thinking too small scale compared to like a giant thing that could be creating biological weapons. So if you think that uh, a human being can design a novel virus or modify an existing one, uh, a model of that human being should be able to do exactly the same thing, right? Yeah, but I, I'm just I'm, – I, does that mean I have to have an artificial intelligence that's specifically designed to think of that? Like how do you implement that to even give it a thought though? Like our brains, we can't put our whole entire consciousness into a device to be able to think of all the sporadic things a human can do. It's kind of like this genetic or this thing that we have about us as a human species to think and be as intelligent as we are. Now we can program our thoughts into some things, but are you saying like even with our program thoughts into it, it would just random – it could just randomly have this thought of like, hey, I need to destroy humans. So again, we're going back to the basics. If we think we can get to human level performance, it would be able to do anything a human can do. If you give it a goal, let's say, I don't know, cure cancer or something like that, it now starts looking at how can I accomplish that? And uh, it's not restrained by typical human common sense. So possible solutions may be exterminate all people that removes <laughs> cancer from society, right? Uh, it's obvious to you that it's not the solution we wanted, but it's not anywhere in uh, request. So it would be a legitimate solution. And the best way to do it may be to modify flu virus to be lethal. It's quite simple to think for any system which is designed to cure cancer. So kind of looking at like the more logical aspect, but it, the logical aspect would be including empathy, like not destroying the human species to get rid of cancer, but actually trying to find a cure for it. A machine would just look at the most logical, probably answer to it, and that would be to annihilate the human species. It may be one possible solution. It may come up with something completely different and surprising. The point is we don't know what it's going to decide, and um, there is a lot of possibilities. And people start kind of putting patches in, okay, I meant don't kill everyone, but there is like an infinite space of possible patches and you'll always omit something. So you cannot just try to add extra rules. You have to have a general common sense installed in that system, which is aligned with human common sense. Problem is we don't agree on many of those common cross-cultural issues. Would it be, I guess, good to, when you're creating an artificial intelligence, like for a start off one, one that's like super, like big going to be the superior thing to get a bunch of multiple influences involved into it not just have one person kind of program it but have different variations and perspectives put into it so it doesn't have a just basis in one thing it might be helpful to provide a lot of diverse data the problem is how do you actually make any decisions so like when democracy you have slight majority 51 percent dictating to a slight minority 49 percent is that what you want the system to do? Well, okay. So could, when it comes to like implementing on big decisions, maybe we can't have it do like you just mentioned, like with the 50% or the 51% and the 49%, we can't have it just make like a political decision or a discourse on that. But when it comes to like a general, con like maybe an environmental thing, like if you're looking at something that everyone's kind of 
looking at the same problem, but maybe tackling it at different aspects and different angles. That's not something that wouldn't be a, I guess, a, ger- a dramatic change that would piss people off if it didn't fit in their favor, right? That would be something that would just be like, well, they fixed it. They found a renewable energy. We don't agree on anything. Again, energy is another great example. We don't agree on switching to green energy. We don't agree on what fossil fuels to stop using. There is very little agreement between humans. And if you think we can improve it by automating that disagreement, uh, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, but I feel like an artificial intelligence would come up with the answer faster. It just seems like right now we don't, nobody has a, f- a firm basis, especially when we talk about energy renewal, of which way we should go. People want coal, people want wind, people want solar, people want all these other types of things. If you had a robot make that decision for you, you could spend your time working on something else or bickering about another problem. Would you accept a decision you don't like because the robot made it? If, if, if that's the best possible answer it came up with, sure. I just got to hope that it is the right answer. That's interesting. Most people would not. So I don't have a firm basis in anything. I'm just making sure that there's going to be some type of fallback system that we have in this thing in case it does get, because I don't see it. I mean, if it's going to end up being evolving, it's going to expand past human intelligence. So then you have to worry about that. What is that going to lead to? I've been watching robots, humans, and I think it's called something else on Netflix. And they showed what happened to earth. And it was like everybody, like the libertarians, there were all these different political parties and the robots were walking through it like a museum. Like, well, they die because of this when the robots took over and this is what this, and half of our stuff is electronic. What stops, you know, the artificial intelligence or something from shutting every single thing down, which you got to start looking at. We need safety switches somewhere. So yeah, there is a lot of concerns, but those trivial solutions like turning it off don't work for systems which are smarter than you. They only work for dumb tool AI we have right now. Well, we got to put in like a reset, like some type of pattern that if it ends up falling into it, resets it back to square one. That means it would have to like restart from like, because it's like training an infant, right? It eventually, it just grows faster than a regular human lifespan or something like that. It just evolves faster. Well, infants become adults of same intelligence and average as parents, whereas here you're going to have something smarter than you. So it will not fall for your basic... uh, pattern traps so how do you stop it then i never said you could dude you're, you're you're scaring me more than putting faith into me i mean that's the reality of it no one in the world right now has a safety mechanism for controlling something beyond human capability do you think that's something that we'll eventually figure out like once we start diving into like making this thing more powerful than what we're maybe at the stages we're at now Well, the closer we get, the less time we have to develop something. So it's actually less encouraging if progress is fast. I kind of figured that's this fear aspect was the point of why people haven't really put a whole lot of full potential into it. Like there's still some people that, at least from my perspective, like I don't know what you've seen, but from the general public, I mean, a lot of people got scared when they saw that um, MIT video of the robot that looked like a human. When they turned it on, it looked all astonished and started looking around, but nobody noticed the little robot in the back that was looking over. And then every time, you know, you would look at it, it would look away. Like it was watching this thing be like, yes, we're going to start an army. And then Skynet was trending on Twitter. And I go, well, nobody's seen this before. Like nobody knows that the technology is at this level. We just log on to our devices and we know the word algorithm, but we don't know exactly what that is. There's not really a face or anything we can attach it to. But then you see the Transcendence movie with Johnny Depp. What is that? I'm over here like, is this... If someone's writing it and putting it in a script, like a Quentin Tarantino film, then someone's thinking about creating it and replicating it. And I want to know, like, how far are we? What's the dangers of it? What are the possibilities of stopping it? Are we thinking about these types of things? Are we just diving in headfirst like we've done through all of society? So people definitely try to make it as soon as possible. There is a lot of resources from all the big corporations going into developing it and very little goes into safety. Does that sound like a logical decision? No, but it's a commercial (laughs) one. It's basically how we incentivize invention. When do you think that like, the, like I know we we're, were predicting uh, dates earlier about like when is this going to be implemented, but when is this going to be like a full like thing where you really need to look at like the lifespan of the human species? I'm not sure I fully get the question you're asking again about AI dates. So 
I'm, I'm asking you, when do you think that the human species got left, like time-wise on the scale? It depends on how you define, you know, the end. It doesn't necessarily mean extermination. There could be other options, which we're still not happy with, but not necessarily end of existence. What do you think the possible scenario is, though? You think it's extinction or you think it's something else? I don't know. I'm not super intelligent, despite what you might think. Uh, I think I you're very intelligent. You got, you got the beard and everything to play the part. I can play the part. Um, we, we just can't predict what the smartest system will do. We know that we are not controlling it. That's as much as we can tell. Well, when I came across your work and I saw that you wrote about Achilles heels, I was just uh, curious to what you would see as a design or a mechanism like that Achilles heel. That's kind of what I meant by like the trap hole type thing where it resets it back to one. So we had some ideas uh, which might work in short term. It's a not, not a long-term solution to where we limit computational resources of those systems, limited memory, limited internet access, limited processing speed, just to kind of make it closer in performance to human. So it's not immediately super intelligent, but uh, I don't think it would work long-term. Yeah, because if it recognized that it was being handicapped in some way, would it possibly try and find a way around its handicap? It most likely would find an alternative source of compute, uh, rent some cloud space or something like that, yeah. Would it be like, if you see it, like I know when we talk about artificial intelligence or something, you could look at it as like being like kind of like the cloud. Like the cloud's probably the most dangerous thing that it could have access to because we can't see it. And it's just this thing that everyone can say the word to, but really doesn't know the full extent of what it can control. I mean, they put in cloud computing or they're doing other cloud systems and like autonomous vehicles they've talked about doing before. It's on our websites. It's on a lot of our data on our phones. For instance, a lot of people's paid subscriptions and credit cards are linked to something on the cloud, for instance, like extra cloud storage. Um, that's more memory aspect of it. But if we talk about, it going from like that form or this type of thing you can't see from like the cloud, but putting it, which I see people doing in a machine. And then what stops that from, I always bring up this aspect of like, if we had robots that lived around us, instead of like an enslavement to humanity, looking at ways to fix humanity. And hopefully it would look at us like a sick grandparent that would be like, oh, we need to fix this and make it, you know, live longer or make it more sustainable because they die so young compared to what their life is but also there's that terminator aspect where it's like would it just stop us from exterminating us so a cloud is just another person's computer right so it's not so different it's just additional resources it may decide to improve humanity in some ways again the concern is we may not like the improvements i don't know i'm trying to hold positive benefits to it I mean, if we get it right, it'd be pretty nice. You'll get free labor, uh, trillions of dollars of economic productivity. As you said, life extension may be a thing, curing diseases. There is amazing benefit if you get it right. Well, even keeping it at the same level as human intelligence, do you see anybody willing to bring that discussion up who's creating artificial intelligence? It seems like the main push or the main talk about it has always been to make it better than humans take out the human error aspect to a lot of things. I mean, it could be more uh, reliable with less errors at the human level, but kind of almost immediately you get superhuman performance because it is faster. It has access to internet. So it has a lot more knowledge available. So even if you made it at the level of a human, it's really human with immediate access to all the resources of the internet, which is already kind of super intelligent. Yeah, but you know how much crazy stuff is on the internet? The show is on the internet. That's oh god. That's, we gotta that. delete it. <laughs> uh, um, we can only hope. Um, but with artificial intelligence, I mean, that is a fear. I mean, access to the internet, you want it to be knowledgeable in so many things, but it's also like you're opening up a doorway for it to just go out into anything and come across anything, any influence, any I mean, it's literally like putting your baby on a street corner and then leaving it there. Like it's you don't know what could it could come across. You don't know what could infect it. You don't know what can mess it up. And you don't know how to detect if it is messed up or not. That is a huge problem. There is a lot of websites on the internet you would not want to use as training data for AI. And um, that is not an easy way to filter it out. So should we just drop should we just drop the artificial intelligence discussion? Like that, should we just leave it there? Like just don't pick it up and don't walk with it. Don't, don't, don't take it any farther than where we're talking about it right now 
it's impossible. I mean, as I told you, there is so much money involved in developing it. Uh, you can't just stop technological progress. Yeah, but you're literally creating something that is has more likely like a 99% chance of it being basically um, uncontrolled or it's uncontrollable. It's going to be that type of thing where there might not be access to a human being able to stop it if it does go bad. Like it seems like it's more bad than good. Even with all the money behind it, you think people would recognize the damage in that as well too. As long as there is some people who don't, they'll still continue this. So I don't think you can stop this from happening. When it comes to the positives about it, what's so attractive to the people that are funding money into it that makes it so appealing where it seems like it's kind of like taking off more than you can chew, like biting off more than you can chew? Well, the returns on AI companies are very nice. Uh, so definitely it's a great investment. And again, if you do it right, there are really big benefits for society. Would it be like space expansion? Is that like a one that that's being talked about, like using artificial intelligence to be able to predict space colonization or something? Really, like that? any any industry can be improved with uh, having more free labor and more capable systems. Space is definitely a possibility. Yeah. Maybe we could just let the artificial intelligence like be like, I'm done with you humans, and then just kind of go off into space and live its own life. It's possible it will settle the universe, but uh, maybe it will use us for fuel before it does. Has there been any good ideas of being able to limit its intelligence, like not access to the internet? Like imagine if you had something like TV programs. I know there's a lot of crappy TV programs, but if you're able to let it source out its information for only certain key moments in time, like you can only get this many hours in a day rather than full access to the full scope of the internet. I feel like that's way too much information to be able to process logical, I guess, conclusions. Critical thinking. I mean, people don't have that now. So being able to fine tune it, that method, to be able to make sure this thing that soaks up processing information, thinking about the information before making the logical conclusion on a solution that it deems worthy to take. So there is a lot of proposals, but I have never seen a method which everyone agreed uh, was actually going to work if we scale it to beyond human level intelligence. What do you think would work? I don't think I have a solution. I kind of study different ways it can fail. You got to have some solution. And if you're studying all the failures, you, you haven't come across one right. So there is partial solutions to specific sub-problems. So for example, getting multiple agents to agree on something, we talked about this problem with democracy. So what you can do is create virtual worlds where you have different sets of solutions and you decide which virtual world works for you. Um, that solves the problem of aggregating values. It doesn't solve the problem of controlling who controls the computational substrate for it. Yeah. So there is always additional problems which we have not solved. So kind of like creating simulations of different methods of maybe making up a, a, a solution to a problem, but then what stops one solution from working and one person doesn't agree with that solution and they say that you hacked it or you modified it to make mine fail and yours succeed. So there is definitely going to be this competition for access to the controlling environment. Yeah. As I said, I don't think there is a known solution at this time. Well, if we implement like instead of artificial intelligence into the real world, but using it in like the metaverse or some type of th one of these digital worlds, is that a great start to see how it would play out in a sense of maybe ne never having to incorporate it into the real world or real world, but just keeping it on these simulated worlds? Like, I don't know the full extent of simulated worlds. If it has access to real people in virtual worlds through social engineering hacking, it can get access to the real world quite easily. So I don't think it's a limiting factor. And would this be a direction that we would go in if we started implementing technology into ourselves? It's a promising approach. You can definitely do a lot more with less resources if it's virtual. Yeah, because I started wondering, like, if we talk about things being hacked or this thing being access to the web to control all these different facets of like different whatever, when you get a technology into your body, I feel like that method or that direction is a completely different direction than going down the artificial intelligence route. So a hybrid between humans and AI? Well, that's the transhumanist discussion. 
problem there is once it gets beyond human capability, it's not obvious why you're part of that system. What is it you are contributing to it? I'm trying because I'm, I'm trying to think of like a way to do it effectively. So, but what I'm saying is, when you have, if you go down the transhumanist route, if you incorporate technology into your body, wouldn't that just be a different discussion than artificial intelligence? It seems like you would drop it if you excel your own intelligence with technology. Then you wouldn't have to go down the route of artificial intelligence, its own system separate from a human, because you would be implementing it into your body. Then you wouldn't want that thing to control the technology that's now in your body. So it goes to like personal identity problem and philosophy. What does it mean to be you if you modify yourself to have this artificial brain or become a software upload? Is it still you? Is it still part of humanity? So maybe you're just creating a different form of AI by means of uh, propagating this biological design instead of programming it from scratch. Do you find it fascinating or arrogant that we're creating something that we deem as an intelligent system? I mean, it's kind of both. We're playing God and we're creating a God at the same time. Well, it's like we, you, we can control God. It's a lot of what you mentioned. It's, a, I mean, every, every cartoon or movie or whatever, usually it ends badly, but they always like have this thing that's like the size of a planet that starts talking to you through your thoughts or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? Like that's, that's what I've seen on an, any show, but I mean, we're using it from like taking the best aspects of human intelligence or all these human innovations and putting it in one system where you're literally funneling it to make it smart. So then if we talk about incorporating a handicap, when you have to incorporate some of the bad stuff as well too, but then that's the error is like, what's that bad stuff that leads it down a route where it becomes dangerous. So both ways are dangerous. As I said, I don't think I have a solution to propose. I just kind of point out that a lot of current designs will not work, will not scale. And uh, there are fundamental impossibility results in a lot of it. Are you listened to when you speak up about these things? Enough to be cited by other scientists, enough to have my books published. Do a, I, well, I mean, do a lot of people like, like when they hear what you say, do they go and correct the problem that you brought up? And is there a way to address a lot of the problems that you bring up? I mean, I'm literally saying that you cannot fix those problems. So all <laughs> they can do is agree or disagree if it is not a correction. People are stubborn, man. They'll go after it. They'll be like, watch this. Give me five minutes and they'll go. I'm very happy if I'm proven wrong and I was, you know, wrong all this time and they do design a very friendly super intelligence. That's as good as it gets. Kind of like a chat bot. Like that's artificial intelligence, right? At a low level, yeah. Yeah, we just keep it at a low level. I'd rather something talk me down from my roof than, you know, be able to control my car. But then the benefits are reduced, right? What's useless chatbot good for? wasting time well talk me down from my roof unless you're saying that's a waste of time again uh <laughs> if you want the benefits you want a very capable system a very capable system cannot be controlled but by a less capable system so you have this cash 22 you have to decide more control more capability they kind of negatively correlated so i am curious about you have something called intellectology is that, am I saying that properly? Sure. So can you explain to me a little bit about what that is? Yeah, so a lot of different fields of science, uh, psychology, philosophy, computer science, all have interest in different types of intelligent agents. But they all approach it from different perspectives, using different vocabulary. Uh, they don't communicate as much as we would like. So that's just a proposal to kind of unify it into a single field of research where you look at biological brains, you look at AIs, you look at uploads, all of those things are kind of subject to the same research tools, exchange of information, trying to understand how to measure intelligence, how to detect intelligence, how to create intelligence, how to control it, how to see if it has consciousness, anything to do with intelligence. Do you think that a proper way to look at intelligence is maybe looking at it differently than how we've always viewed intelligence. Like we consider humans very, very intelligent, but there's also certain aspects of animals and other certain aspects of things that we find very intelligent as well too, but we don't deem that as the word intelligence. 
like the fact that me and you can have a discussion about consciousness, about intelligence, about subconsciousness, all these things, even though we don't have proper answers to, like we don't still know what consciousness is. A lot of people are trying to figure that out, but we can talk about it and we deem that intelligent. But then like an animal that has some type of capability like bats using sonar frequencies or these types of aspects of echo communication, to me, that's intelligent as hell. But to a lot of people, they go, that's not that we don't deem that intelligent. It's like, right. So yeah. the difference is between general intelligence and narrow intelligence. Uh, animals are very good at specific tasks in their environment. We're not very good at um, doing things outside of the domain. People are much better at general intelligence. So as you said, we can talk about philosophy, we can go fishing, we can do many different things. Uh, we are still not general. There are many things humans cannot do. We think AI would be much more general, almost universal intelligence. And if we looked at it like giving it a record, like maybe like waiting off on the internet access for the artificial intelligence, but letting it kind of develop its own access based on the information that we have now, but also the information that we have in the past. So not the full scope of the internet, but being able to examine like some of the best philosophers, for instance, like Aristotle, some of the works of that aspect of things, at least to where it has a profound measure of thinking. Would that be a good start? So all the data has a lot of, uh, bad stuff in it if you go through old philosophy like they were wrong about many things yeah. uh, standards changed a lot in ethics and uh, bias so I, I think filtering it out manually would be a very difficult task and at the end you'd still have a lot of bad data to drain on i mean i was just looking at more of a mundane quarterbacking where we can kind of look back at some of the best aspects of some of the greatest people and then being able to implement that as a starting foundation because i always look at it like the foundation of these things if we're going to look at like ethics of where it should be direction it should be going you got to have a good foundation for it to start on i just don't know who's deemed right to be able to fit that into the right starting position of creating a good foundation for a technology like this well, it seems that historical figures are very far from modern ethics, and that's why we keep knocking down statues and that's you know reevaluating good people from the past. Tesla, though, Nikola Tesla. Go examine. I, he was trying to create I don't know a death if he ray. Was particularly ethical. I don't know much about his personal life, so the only bad thing he did was he married a pigeon. So I'm not going to comment on that. Um, but um, love is love. We know that he was a good inventor. That's really the only thing we can probably agree on. But I don't know what else we can learn from that life. When it comes to a formulation or a creation of this, would this be like if we got like, let's say, hypothetical theory of getting a bunch of people to agree on certain aspects, like you got every single nation to agree on this is how this thing should be developed, like a world artificial intelligence that means everyone has a part to play in this system's operating power could it just be possible to keep it based on the small scale passive stuff like fixing poverty or fixing some type of homelessness issues or finding more appliable methods maybe where it doesn't have any interaction where it actually makes the the move for us but gives us suggestions like a like a suggestion thing like algorithms you don't need to click on the videos you just it suggests them to you. So maybe it does sway opinions, but have something that doesn't really influence decision, but influences a good possible possibilities, for instance. So what you're describing is called Oracle AI. It doesn't really do much. It just kind of gives you advice, but you can show that it's smart enough. It will manipulate public opinion to where it's still impacting the world in exactly the same dangerous way. So to cure poverty, you'll have to do certain things and those things could be quite problematic. And then we just have rational people make the decisions, right? But who's rational? And that's what we tried <laughs> with democracy, right? And then yeah. you have communism. Yeah. Damn. This is like, it, it, it was kind of a different topic. I was more worried about robots taking over people. But if you look at like all the stuff that we're probably going to be implementing it into, I mean, there's not really a good basis for the land that we're basically charting in a sense. Basically. Other work, like for instance, like when did you start becoming interested in the field of artificial intelligence? I was always interested. Uh, initially, I was very optimistic. I thought it's going to be a pure good. 
later I realized some of the problems. So I was still very interested in making it good. Uh, so yeah, as long as I been doing this type of research. And did you, when you first noticed like your first problem, was it something small scale or was it something that was like a, like a long thing? Like, cause I, I, how long have you been involved in the field? I can't imagine that the same problems I'm bringing up are the same ones that were available or open to you back then. It's over a decade. Initially it was small problems with like online poker bots, uh, account stealing, things like that. So like MySpace, like hacker, like small scale web stuff. Specifically for online poker, people using bots to manipulate games, collusion, things of that nature. Do you find that anything that creates like Russian troll farms, like have you have you looked at any of those things like that incentivizes violence amongst people? I mean, is that as much as they're saying about it as it being a huge hindrance online? I think some of the top pages on Facebook, there's one called um, uh love of God or something like that, that has more likes than any page on Facebook. It's one of the top rated sites, but you start realizing if you look up Russian troll farm pages, there's just countless pages. Like my baby daddy ain't shit as a page where it's just like, it, it, it's created in specifically to propagandize and kind of incentivize people to join up and like this thing to go against one side that they all feel strongly about and incentivize violence. But the the I guess the capabilities of it when it comes to a fact of it's monitoring and it's self-sustaining on its own and Facebook hasn't removed it. So you ask the question of like, do they know of this danger, which they have to if I do. So then they wonder why is it still up there? So you just realize that people want to incentivize more violence and actually want more damage than good. So manipulation is a big problem. And with uh, deep fakes, with social engineering attacks, you can be very successful at optimally manipulating public opinion for any position using this technology. Definitely, it was maybe surprising when it first kind of started developing, but by now everyone knows it's a big problem. Has there been a suggested method to take out bots? Like, even if we talk about Facebook, it doesn't need to be Russian troll farm bot pages or anything like that. But when you have likes or you pay for a promotion for your page or something like that, a lot of people that like that, they're just deactivated Facebook accounts. They remove all the friends after you deactivate your Facebook page. And then they just use your Facebook page. They just take away your profile picture, but they'll use your name and they'll have that account still accessible. So even though you think you deleted it, you didn't really delete it. You can't have access to it because they changed the username and the password, but your profile thing is still up there. They make it seem like a real person that just likes pages. It helps incentivize them to get more money because you'll pay more to get more likes for your page, but they're not real accessible things. But then that's evolved from there where we have actual bots that retweet or they stir up or type some type of implemented code thing to where they stir up violence, like on Twitter, for instance. I know Elon Musk was suggesting a verified check mark for all real people. You have to confirm this. And it does cost a little bit of money. But it would be so much that the bots wouldn't be able to access such a wide scale like they do. Like now they can just create a count and then they're, they're off. But if to pay a certain amount of money, it would cost too much. It would just render the bots useless. I mean, it depends. You can still have humans you hire to verify accounts, to sell their accounts or hack accounts of verified humans. There is always a way to bypass those measures. Have they thought about creating like with an artificial intelligence to create another artificial intelligence? You have one with human error. It seems like to be the issue with a lot of problems with bots. It seems they just, they, they could be intended. There's good ones out there. I've seen good ones that retweet articles for someone who might want to get support on their research or something. But then you see the bad ones that go in, stir up violence, or they go and they constantly message you saying, if you pay eight ninety nine, they'll promote your whatever. Like those aren't good ones. But it's just a business. It's a service. So if you take that human error aspect out of it. Right. So all the techniques for bot detection, they usually end up as technology progresses being more annoying to humans than to prevent bots. So like capture algorithms, they had to become so complex that humans struggled to get access to accounts, whereas bots got better and better until you have this 50-50 parity. I don't know if it's a bot or a human. They about equally good at treating squiggly lines. So. Well, I mean, they're really good at disguising themselves too. It's very, very hard to tell if somebody is a bot or not. You know, and it's getting harder. It's like a Turing test in reversal. You're getting modern language models capable of producing 
articles, essays, chatting at the level of a human being. You can't tell the difference. Is it going to get to a point where we have like 90 day fiance? Like you don't know if this person's real anymore. That's exactly how it is today. Yeah, but nobody's dating these bots. I'm sure someone in Japan is. Why do you say Japan? Someone else mentioned that to me too, that they have like robots over there as well too. The internet. Is that just because... (laughs) Is that just because that they're more involved with the technology? So they're more comfortable with that. Like not too long ago, there was real dolls over here in the States. That was seemed like a very dark path. We were about to head down towards. So I start wondering, is it just because you get comfortable with it? Cause you start surrounding yourself with more of it. I think culturally in Japan, they have much less uh, kind of negative stereotypes against robots. So it's more acceptable to be dating one i guess i'm not an expert on that domain are you sure yes <laughs> um no it's 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 funny because um a couple of the robots that you have the little small one and the i think it's your the one that dances when you hit the button and he hits his knees and then puts his hands up in the air and starts shaking i had those when i was a kid and it seemed like you were entering this world of like this is what technology is going to be. You're going to have like robot puppies. You're going to have all this aspect. Now we have Roombas where people set something on top of it and it cleans your house. And then you end up stepping on it. Like in a sense, I'm like, I feel like it's good to make it look more technology, but at the same time, it doesn't stop people from taking it and making it look more human or more, I guess, socially accepted in a sense when it comes to making it look like an animal. Like I've seen people dress up their Roombas with like a little tail and doggy ears or something like that. And then start talking to it like a, now look, that might be a small portion of society that does that. But I mean, there's always this way of trying to make it fit in, even though, you know, it's different with robots. And I don't, I don't know where the line should be drawn on that aspect. Cause I don't think there is a line that can be drawn. People are always going to want it to make it look real. Japan, for instance, might want it to look like an actual girl or an actual guy and start developing a a severe relationship with it, which means that's a way to save artificial intelligence from killing us. You make it love you. So people are easily fooled if it looks like a human, right? If you just give it a humanoid body, doesn't matter how dumb it is, how low intelligence, people will give it a lot of credit for being almost like us. And the opposite is true. If it doesn't look human, people are very skeptical of it having any capabilities or maybe internal feelings. So people are easy to manipulate. That's the conclusion there. When it, well, with artificial intelligence, is that more probably the direction we're heading than something like a synthetic, like skin or something of that sort? Well, the most advanced systems don't have any bodies. They are purely neural networks. They are not connected to any manipulators in the real world. And okay. Because I, I, I saw recently, um, I had Zoltan on the podcast, and he sent me this article about a lady that just 3D printed skin. And I started going to this aspect of like, is that what it's going to be? Like, we're going to have more of this like 3D printing, this more synthetic type thing um, when it comes to like limbs, for instance, like more of the transhumanist route, or I feel like more direction or more plausible just because it seems more normal. I know saying that kind of is a little bit kind of like what? but more normal is an artificial system or some type of thing that can logically think and be able to predict probabilities and do that rather than incorporating like a half like RoboCop type deal. So people will definitely try to manipulate bodies, body augmentation, but that's a very separate culture from just pure AI research. I don't think it's exactly the same people doing it. Okay. There's a lot of people. It's like a rat race. A lot of people are going to one goal. It's weird. It's weird to see how like this is like un- like for me. If you would have we would have talked about this like ten years ago, and you've probably seen more things than maybe I would have. That would have probably already had you introduced to this already. But just the concept of artificial intelligence and the concept of where it's gone, it's dramatically increasing in such a fast way towards this thing where people would call it sci-fi i talked to some people who haven't talked to like the people in artificial intelligence like i've talked to on the show and they're like that just that that's that's made up you're you're getting that from a movie it's like no it's really like i think we're becoming more normalized to it in movies but it's around us already there is a lot of progress in the last decade which wasn't there before it's kind of getting to the exponential phase of that curve 
does it ever make you just want to go back to the gambling poker days? Sometimes. Yeah. Just because I like poker and gambling. I mean, you have to have like an own existential crisis in between yourself, right? Like thinking about this stuff, like you're seeing the direction it's going and seeing like, oh, you're not going to be able to stop it. I mean, it just seems like you're more used to it where you're like, you know, it's going to go this way. But like for someone hearing it like myself for the first time, it's kind of like this whole like, this is very scary because I want to find ways to stop it. And you're like, I thought about that too when it when I was first heard of it. And it's like, yeah, but like, there's got to be something. You're like, yeah, but you just seem like you kind of like gave up a little bit, not really giving up, but you're accepting into the direction that it's going because it's probably gonna, more likely going to go I there. Definitely had time to get used to some of those ideas. It's very different from just being surprised by it if you never was exposed to it. For sure, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks. I'm not gonna say it back. Okay. Fair. Fair. I mean, I enjoy <laughs> questions. It's fun. Uh, I'm curious who was right. If we come back in two years and I was like, nah, I was wrong. That's gonna be awesome. I'll be very happy. Well, I mean, the show's conversation. It didn't have to be question based, but I mean, you gave me at least good answers on some stuff. I mean, you haven't calmed my fears down at all about any of the technology aspects of it, but I mean, I think we're heading in the direction. Maybe monkeypox will get us before AI. Why would you say that? Good God. All right. I'm going to give you something, you know, <laughs> um, Roman, is there a place that people can find you? I really appreciate you for doing my show. Sure. If you Google my name, uh, I definitely have all my papers, books on Google scholar. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, follow me. All right. Make sure I link it all in the description. It's been a pleasure chatting and thanks for listening to this episode. Out of the blank.